video quality you know it's like late and it's dark hang on watch this this will reset it look at that like magic that's probably gonna get weird I still haven't figured out the lights how y'all doing no idea what time it is let me go my iPad here 757 Pacific time hope everybody's doing great maybe simulcasting to Facebook and YouTube at the same time today's March 8th International Women's Day Thank you all very much. Ladies, we love you. You make the world go around. Um, I figured I'd go live for you because why not? I haven't in a long time and wanted to play with this neat little tool I got here. And uh, I'll get my ugly mug off the camera so that um, I don't have to worry about the lighting. So what I wanted to share with you is a couple things. Uh, this is a bit of a preview, really, for a free... Uh, on-demand training you can get at learnwithkern.com. If someone would put that in the comments, that'd be great. Assuming you can actually see me. I have forgotten how to like see the comments here in this uh, app I'm using. I'm using an app. Oh, look, it worked. I'm using an app called Ecamm, and it's been so long since I streamed live, I forgot how to see where the damn comments are. So who knows, you know? I think y'all are there, though. Hope y'all are. Anyway, uh, Learn with Kern. So this is a preview of learnwithkern.com, and I think that's showing on the screen there. Cool. Okay, so here's the deal, all right? Um, I went and opted into a lot of marketing funnels <laughs> recently because I have ADD, and um, man, I think like the uh, the advice that you're getting is pretty horrible in a lot of cases, so it's, it's being overly complicated. So assuming I can get this little mind map thingy to work, Let's see if we can get some action here. So there's really four things that you need, period. It doesn't matter what your business is. These are the only steps, period, uh, that it takes that you need in order to get a customer, right? So it's just these four. It doesn't matter if you're selling, I don't know, um, cars, caskets. What else begins with C? Coaching, consulting, courses, doesn't matter. This is the only four things you need. So the first one is going to be you need to get attention um, from your market. However, you also probably apparently need to be able to use a mind map. Let's see. There we go. All right. So thing number one is you need to get attention from your market. However, all right, this is a big deal. Is that showing up? Okay, let's see if the lights are working. Good. It doesn't, I don't mean like, you know, do dumb stuff for attention, right? So here's the deal. Like everyone who sells something is essentially solving a problem for somebody. Like person who sells this water to us is solving the we ain't got no water problem. Or more accurately, we don't have any expensive water in a green bottle problem because <laughs> we could just turn it on in the tap. When I was a kid, we drank out of the hose. You know, it's all right with me. But uh, anyway, they're solving that problem, right? So when I say get attention, I don't mean like, you know, dumb publicity stunts. I mean like get in front of the people who have the problems you can solve. And so if we look at that, okay, and we look at that one little thing, there's really only a few things to do there. So there's like two categories. And category number one here is going to be, damn it, is that going to let me type? 
Yeah, all right, I think so. All right, that's going to be social posts, okay? And the second category there, if it's going to let me do it, I'm starting to use this. It's pretty cool. There's a little web uh, tool that I just learned about. It's called creately.com. I think it costs like... And guys, this is exorbitant. I think it costs like $7 a month or something. It's got all kinds of cool stuff. You can make like flow charts and things in there. Um, anyway, so the other side of this thing is like social posts is going to be ads and stuff. And there really isn't any and stuff. It's mostly ads. So here's the thing about both of these, all right? And you're getting, you're getting bad advice on both fronts, okay? So number one, social posts. You'll get advice like... Um, you need to get a lot of followers, all right? So that's like the thing to make Frank act rude is to hear someone giving the advice like, oh, dude, you need to get a lot of followers. Um, if you Google organic reach, like just Google Facebook organic reach, uh, you'll see, I think it's Hootsuite did the research. If you go to learnwithkern.com, I've got like the actual documentation that I'll show you. So I'm going by memory here. But I think it was Hootsuite. It was like, you know, only 5.02 or 5.20 percent of your followers will see what you post on social media. And if you have over a hundred thousand followers, which is like, oh, holy crap, you know, then it goes down to point, it's either 0.8 percent or 0.08 percent. It's one of those two. All right, I still keep wanting to look at that other monitor and make sure I don't look too horribly pale. I either look purple. On these dang things are pale, you know, one or the other. Who cares? So you ain't watching this for my looks. Um, but anyway, so the, the deal is like followers are meaningless. So that's social, you know, and so that's research published by Hootsuite. Kind of think they know what they're talking about. Um, Instagram's a little better. So I'm, again, I'm doing this by memory. Last stat I saw was from a website called Short Stack. It said about 10%. Of your Instagram followers will see your your stuff, which means nine out of ten people won't. They did update the algorithm, and now it's not even necessarily followers. Um, and so again, like Google this or go to learnwithkern.com, and I'll show you the screenshots of the documentation. But it's something like they'll either you know your ten percent of your followers will see it, or they'll start, or probably better said, and or they'll show it to people who they think are going to like it. And both algorithms, Facebook and your Instagrams, proper way to say it, both of those algorithms are really leaning towards, hey, I think this person's going to like it. And that all is triggered by something called engagement. All right? So you don't want a lot of followers. I mean, it looks cool, but it doesn't do any good for you. You want a lot of engagement, okay? So if we come over here, into the social posts world. All right, I'm gonna try not to take forever on this little thing. Really, I just wanted to mess around and hang out with y'all and like give like a little blatant promotion for learnwithkern.com, <laughs> which is a free web class. All right, so the thing we want is engagement, not followers. All right, so the question becomes, well, how do you get engagement? All right, and essentially there are two types of posts that get engagement, all right? Number one is called a connection post. That's a post where you do something called values matching with the reader and or viewer, and they feel an emotional bond with you. That gets a lot of engagement. The second is a how-to post. Um, I've got a lot of research I can share with you if you go to learn with Kern about why that's important, but especially both of those topics. I'll just tell you now. Um, Harvard Business Review did a study that said a fully connected customer, as a cu customer that's engaged with you like on an emotional level, all right, they are likely to spend two times more than a customer who is highly satisfied. Crazy, right? So you get engagement by building that emotional bond, and you do that with social media posts, organic free social media posts that I refer to as connection posts. So that's their design. Now, another study that I found, and I forgot the dang source of it, sorry, said something like 42% of social media users' buying decisions are influenced by educational content, aka how-to, right? And so that's really what you want to do. So if we look over here, um, the way to get engagement is, all right, we want to do connection, 
I think it's is it share. Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, connection, or or rather, this is your second type of post here. This is organic. All right. And sometimes you'll hear me call these how-to uh, posts. I'll refer to them as demonstration posts. Uh, but either way, you're teaching them how to do stuff, okay? So there's that. So that's like myth-busting part one, you know, which is this whole followers crap. The second thing, all right, and again, you really want to, like, if you want to see a much better presented version of this data with actual documentation and everything, uh, go to learnwithkern.com. But the next thing that you're going to hear is that you need to look cool. You know, like your posts have to be like professional. Um, and dude, if you haven't seen the movie uh, Fake Famous, I think that's what it's called. It's on HBO Plus. It's the craziest thing ever. Um, but you'll see like the, these Hollywood people took five random, four or five random people and said, you guys want to be influencers? And they're like, sure. And they staged all these fake photos, then bought them a bunch of fake followers and everything. And um, it kind of goes along with this myth that you got to look like you're, you know, fancy or whatever. The, uh, the I would say the unfortunate truth, but the actual very, very fortunate truth for us is this. Um, you do not need to look fancy. You need to be authentic. All right. So there we go. There was a study that was done by Ogilvy uh, ad agency, and they found that the consumer has something called influencer fatigue. All right, and that's now that's the way you spell fatigue now. There we go. Can't type and talk at the same time. And Forbes, all right, wrote a little article that shows that the consumer has now a lack of trust. Okay, and the reason that both of these things are happening is because of, of two two things. Number one. All influencers look the same. This is in the eyes of the consumer. All right. And so, again, I'll show you like slides from Ogilvy's uh, research and stuff if you go to learnwithkern.com. But this is all, you know, very well documented by that agency. So, number one, we all blend together. You know, so if you're trying to do still look a little Casperish, but whatever, <laughs> we all blend together. So, if, you know, if you're looking like everybody else and you're, you're getting ignored. The second thing has been that there is such a a twofold thing going on. There's number one, a complete lack of transparency when, uh, you know, influencers tr are trying to sell stuff and they're trying to act like they're not trying to sell stuff. So that's caused a major, you know, diminishment of trust um, with social media stuff. The second thing is people were starting to catch on that it's faked. You know, I mean, they just made a movie about it, for God's sake. So the cure for this is to, again, go back to making your content like this. Content type number one is content that builds that emotional connection. And there's specific formulas and frameworks for this. Content type number two is where you actually, I mean, this is a crazy idea, but you actually give them value. <laughs> you know, like show them how to do stuff. All right, so when you're doing that and you know you don't look like everybody else and you're not standing in front of a, you know, a mansion or whatever, like, even if you own a mansion, you might not want to stand in front of a mansion these days. Like, you just do it as a normal person. Your engagement level goes through the roof, as does your trust. All right, so that's like some myths busted there within the, and the, within the world of organic social media. Another one, and then I'll move on to the next thing, because my wife ordered dinner, and I'm hungry. Um, I mean, someone's got to keep all 260 pounds of this working, you know. The other thing is this concept that you have to be posting all the time. Um, I disagree. I don't think you do at all. I think you need to make three posts per day, max, and there are only three types of posts. There's your connection post, there's your how-to post, and then there's your offer post. And your offer post is like, hey, go here and get a thing, you know? Um, all right, so that's those are your myths there. So now if we go to your next category here of getting attention, you got ads and stuff, all right? And actually, for the sake of time, um, I'll just like tell you instead of trying to work the mind map. Because you know what? The mind map, it kind of takes a minute. Probably should have made the mind map first or something. Thought this would be cool, you know? So within the concept of uh, running ads, 
here's the advice that you're getting, which is just absolutely horrible. Um, there's There are three things here. Number one is go big or go home. You don't want to do that. So people say, well, dude, you know, you need to start out with a pretty good size ad budget. I don't recommend that at all. Um, the reason why is most ads don't work at first. <laughs> you know? So you want to test small and see what doesn't work and stop running that. So that's myth number one. Um, don't, don't do that. Start really, really small. Myth number two is folks will say, oh, dude, you got to find the perfect avatar. You know, like it's got to be, a, you know, I mean, it, it, a dude who's 45 years old, plays golf, has two kids, has a Labrador, likes Frisbees, whatever. Um, you know, and like that's who you focus everything on. And um, that's also completely wrong. And the reason why is that that person is relatively impossible to really find using social media. Now, their tools will tell you that you can find them. You know, so you can say, okay, I want to show this to men age 40 to 45 who are interested in Labradors. But, you know, like when it shows the uh, interests and all of that kind of stuff, when you're running uh, social ads like Facebook ads and everything, it's not necessarily that the dude typed in to his profile, I'm interested in Labradors. It could be that he read a post about Labradors or Facebook has tracked him that he's gone to websites that are about Labradors. But those interests aren't really as accurate as we think they are. So the thing you want to do is target a bunch of probably good audiences. So probably good audiences, uh, you know, might be a dude who likes dogs, you know, and that would be it. And you want to target like five to 20 of those. So instead of getting one big audience that's perfect and putting all your money on that, you want to spend a little bit of money on like five to 20 maybe audiences and then let your ad do the filtering for you. And so that brings us to the third thing about social media is you have to have the perfect ad, right? And this, there is no such thing as the perfect ad. Um, it's extremely difficult to write a perfect ad. I don't know very many people who have. The ones who have are, you know, immortalized. It's so rare. So a better thing, especially for social media, because really it's pretty cheap at the end of the day, is write a glaringly obvious ad. So my favorite framework is something called dog whistle copy. I learned this idea from Dan Kennedy. And the ad headline is that my ads that I always like to start with, I always recommend you start with, they're going to have two sentences. The little thing above your picture is going to say, read this if you want big result. All right. And let's say you're sending people to a book or whatever. The little thing below the picture would say, new book reveals how to get big result, learn more. Swear to God. That's it. The concept here is we're showing this ad to a lot of people, different audiences who are probably the right audience, but we're not going to freaking know, dude. Like it's, you know. There's a, literally over half of the Earth's population is on Facebook. Like, they don't have those audiences dialed in yet. All right? So, you don't know. So, you're going to have that obvious copy in your ad that, like, just painfully obvious. Like, okay, this is the right copy. Uh, I'm going to test this. It's clearly calling out to the right person. And then you just look after about three days, and you're like, oh, okay, these two audiences worked really, really well. These other 18 were crappy. I'm going to turn them off. You don't spend a bunch of money doing that and your risk is low. So that kind of covers like very briefly that whole get attention concept, which is the only, you know, is one of the only four things you need, right? So now let me go back to the screen here to the old mind map and we'll do these other ones real quick. Okay. So your other thing, it doesn't matter what you're selling. Come on, man. Don't mess me up. I'm on camera. There we go. All right. So the next thing is you want to get a lead. Okay. And I'm just going to tell you these other ones real quick because I rambled. I haven't been on a, a live and I haven't eaten. And sometimes when I don't eat, my brain functions even worse than usual. All right. So the next one is going to be make an offer. And the fourth one. All right. Fourth step. Bing. Here we go. It's going to be follow up. Okay. So let's talk about these things right here, all right? Getting leads. People love to complicate getting leads. It is not hard. You drive traffic to a web page. 
that is very, very basic. So like, I guess one of the biggest myths about getting leads from social is, uh, well, there's several actually. So am I still, yeah, I'm kind of in focus, eh, whatever. Um, all right, so thing number one is that uh, the lead magnet, you know, people will be like, dude, what should I make as my lead magnet? Like the thing you're gonna give away, you know, the ebook or whatever. And people will tell you, you know, you wanna let your lead magnet do the selling, right? Well, it would be great if that were true, but it's completely dumb because ain't nobody read the lead magnet, all right? Nobody's going to read the damn thing. It doesn't matter if it's the greatest report ever written. The overwhelming majority of the people who opt in to read your uh, report or watch your video or whatever, they won't do it. It has nothing to do with the quality of the lead magnet, by the way. It's human nature. It's the internet. They're very, very distracted. So putting all this pressure on yourself to make the lead magnet itself be so good that it sells your thing is fruitless because the overwhelming majority of people won't do it. The reason I know this is because I actually measured it. So we set up a uh, campaign, got like a thousand leads, and then measured how many of them actually clicked to download the lead magnet, all right? And we sent four hours, no, four emails over the course of four hours to get them to download the thing that they asked for. And of course, if they clicked on it, you know, we would send them the rest of the emails. 20-something percent of them ended up downloading it. That means over 70% of them ignored it after four emails over four hours. So that's myth number one. Don't obsess over Like, make it worth reading but don't pour your life's work into this thing. Most people aren't gonna read it. Um, myth number two on getting leads is that your opt-in page should be beautiful. I wish this were true, really, um, because I would love it to have like really cool looking opt-in pages. I have yet to beat the layout that you will see at learnwithkern.com. It is a headline over a button. That's the entire thing. So I hate that layout. It doesn't look professional. I would love it, if I could beat it with a beautiful, professional-looking page that made me look cool, which is easier said than done, I know. Um, but no matter how many expensive designers I hire, that dumb little layout of big headline and button outperforms everything else. Okay, so now let's go to this one here, which is your next phase, which is make an offer. And I, I know I've sped up, but really you can get like a way better version of this at learnwithkern.com. I'm really doing this to go live because I haven't in a while and I like it and to pitch you on going to take a better version of this for free. All right, so anyway, here's the deal. Okay, the next phase here, make an offer. And this is like actually try to sell something. So that could be, you know, a sales letter or a video sales letter or a webinar or whatever, you know. So here's the big myth around that. It has to be great. Like you've got to make a perfect offer. You know, you need that sucker to convert. And you know what? It would be awesome if your, your sales letter converted great or whatever. Um, but here's the deal, okay? Here's the, the, the truth behind all of this. It doesn't matter how good that thing is. Most people who see it are not going to do what you want them to do. You know, so you'll get all this advice. And man, I've opted into the funnels and I've seen some stuff that's just like, good Lord, I'm going to get in trouble just for reading this. They're telling you to do some of the most unethical and idiotic things like make the biggest promise possible, you know, come up with an outlandish story about the product or whatever. And, and number one, it's kind of insulting to the consumer. Like, you know, it's 2021. Like, people have the internet now and they can kind of check facts for themselves. <laughs> so it's like, A, that's dumb anyway. But B, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good it is. If it's the greatest sales letter ever in history or greatest video or whatever, the, the majority of people who see it will not purchase. Think about the opposite. If the majority of people who saw it did purchase, now these are strangers, you know, coming from social media or whatever, and they did purchase on that first visit, that means your conversion rate would be 51% or higher, which would make you one of the greatest marketers in the history of the world. You know, like it just does not happen. Like, can you get it on like one or, you know, sometimes randomly you'll have a good day or whatever? Yeah, maybe. But generally speaking, you know, you're going to get like, 1% to 10% of the people who see your pitch are going to buy. And that's usually depending on price. So if we know that to be true, then the better way 
to make your offer is just to make an offer by saying like, hey, I got this thing. Here's what it will do for you. It's pretty good. Uh, you know, here's some interesting stuff about it. Here's what I want you to do next. Here's a bonus. Here's a guarantee. See you later. And so you, you do the best you can. I went through that framework pretty quickly. But the real thing here is you want to let the heavy lifting be done by this part, which is the follow-up. All right. And so this is the magic, really, in my opinion. Logically speaking, all right, if we know that most people who see the pitch ain't going to buy, that doesn't, doesn't it make sense to kind of follow up with them, you know? And so here are the myths around follow up, all right? Myth number one put people into a nurture sequence. No, no, that's terrible, terrible advice. Don't put anyone in a nurture sequence, they, they have a problem. They have become your lead because they have a problem and they're interested in getting it solved. They didn't buy from you, probably because of one of these reasons. Number one, they don't believe you. Possible. Uh, number two, they're not ready to buy yet and they're procrastinating. Highly likely. I can't remember the research right now. It's something like the average consumer takes like 22 days from the time they think about buying something until the time they actually buy it, and it takes 32 touches from the brand. Obviously, don't go out and physically touch people, you know, but it takes 32 touch points from the brand, whether they're seeing a banner, getting an email, seeing you on social, whatever, before they actually pull the trigger. And usually, it's a, it's a combination of them mulling over the decision but generally, it's procrastination, right? And we've all been there. Like, I'm the worst at this. I have things that I want to buy and am capable of buying and will not buy until the absolute last minute. Like, we have two bags of coffee left in our house. And so I know it's going to take a week for the coffee to get here. I'm not going to order that damn coffee. I'm ordering it on Amazon, one click. I ain't going to order that coffee until, like, bag number two is halfway done. It's the way it is, it's the way everybody is. Right? So, like, that's thing number one, myth number one, this nurture sequence. Don't nurture, send them the offer a lot. And the reason you want to send it a lot is because of the, the myth number two, which is don't email people a lot because you're going to make them mad. No, email them all the time because they're not reading it. All right? The average consumer, and Ryan Dice put out some research about this a couple of years ago, they get something like 200 emails a day. They ain't reading our stuff, man. So you got to email them a lot. It's not like they're getting your email and going, oh my God, this guy emailed me. Holy crap, this is something. What do you know about that? They're not doing it. They're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Boobs. I mean, that's what's going on. You know? <laughs> so they're like, oh my gosh, gossip. Let me pay attention to that. So they're not, they're not even opening it. If you have an email list, like check your open rates. You know, let's say you got like 30% open rates or something, which would be great. That still means 70% of the people aren't even opening your email, right? So you want to email more. The, the third myth is to have an email newsletter. Eh, when was the last time you read one? Seriously, like a newsletter. I did skim one from Gary V today. Um, but generally speaking, ain't no one reading the damn newsletters. All they're thinking about are two things, period. What they want, how they get it. You need to send emails about what. What you want, how you get it. We already know what they want because they opted in to become your lead. So your solution to their problem is how they get it. You need to be presenting that in multiple ways. Hopefully you found this helpful. It is now 820 something, 824. I'm assuming this dang thing is working. I don't know. I used to have something that would show like your comments and I could bring them on screen. I've clearly pressed the wrong button because I don't see them, but uh, I think, yeah, I can see you're here on my restream thingy, so I'm obviously pressing the wrong button on this, but whatever. I'm going to go eat, go to sleep. I'll see y'all later. I can figure out how to turn this off. Okay, there we go. Actually, hang on. Let me just press this button. Oh, dude, all I had to do was hit, all I had to do was hit a little comments button. Man, I ain't got no dang sense. Oh, well, that's funny. <laughs> I forgot how to use a uh, eCam. Great app, though. It's my fault not knowing how to use it. It's not theirs. Okay. Anyway, now I know. Um, and let's see if I can get this thing turned off. Okay. Y'all have a good evening, man. Thanks so much for wa watching. Again, today's March 8th. This is the time I'm doing this for you. It's 8 something at night, 825. It's uh, International Women's Day. To all the women out there, we love you all so much. Thanks to all the mothers and wives and sisters. 
We love you. God bless.